Hello DevOps people, how is everyone? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Saturday and it's time for another live coding session. Welcome to my stream. I'm uh, Jochen, I'm a system engineer, CTO, um, system administrator, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, on my live stream I do all kinds of DevOps stuff, um, mainly system automation using Chef and working on our hosting dashboard application uh, that's actually in use by our company, um, which is written in Ruby on or based on Ruby on Rails. And uh, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm, uh, I've planned to implement uh, a few feature requests by some of our customers who'd like to access our hosting um, dashboard, not manually via their web browser, but over an API. Uh, there are already a few um, small um, API uh, functions implemented, but uh, it really needs lots of more uh, work and um, some of this work I'm going to do today. So if you're interested in Ruby on Rails and um, how to build an API in Ruby on Rails, um, I hope you will enjoy this stream. But before we begin, um, as always, uh, chat is always welcome. Um, and uh, I'd like to keep these sessions interactive. And I've finally discovered that I had uh, set the Twitch chat to follow us only. Um, no wonder uh, chat has been so quiet in recent times. Um, I've changed that, so feel free to come in and uh, uh, say hello and ask questions. If there's anything you'd like to share or to ask, um, I'll be more than happy to chat. Um, I'm also trying uh, the Twitch IRC integration. I have an IRC client running on my desktop here and um, let's see how um, this uh, compares to the native web-based Twitch chat. All right, um, that's that. Uh, I think there isn't anything else, is there? Let me take a look at my notes can find my browser. Um, yeah, so what ha have I been working on uh, lately? Well, um, to be honest, um, I only returned from holidays uh, this week and uh, I struggled a bit to get back into a rhythm. I hope that uh, getting back to live coding um, on a regular schedule will help me get into this rhythm. And uh, at least it feels like uh, I'm going to start next week productively. Um, this last week hasn't been too productive, if I'm honest. And uh, that's okay as well. Some weeks aren't as productive, especially if you return from uh, two or three weeks of holidays. Um, I've been working on porting our Chef cookbooks to Chef 13, so we can finally ditch the unsupported version Chef 12 that we are still running. Um, this is a lot of work and um, it uh, also requires um, um, a lot of dependency management and um, so uh, it goes ahead steadily but slowly. Um, at the moment I'm working on a, on an Apache cookbook and uh, uh, I've, I've been working on it last night and uh, it didn't um, succeed uh, converging because um, some configuration change didn't go right and I'll have to work out why that is. This might be uh, part of my next live coding session or if we have some spare time today. That's more or less it, and so without further ado, let's uh, jump into our API endpoints.
If you've been to the uh, stream lately, you can see that I've also changed the layout of my um, desktop, desktop again. I've um, restored the sidebar with the webcam picture and uh, with the chat. Um, I find this is uh, a bit more pleasing and even though it takes away a bit of my uh, screen real estate, um, I think it looks cleaner and uh, uh, a bit more pleasant. So I hope you'll enjoy it. All right, so um, there are two new issues I've added to our issue queue uh, API endpoint for updating website details and for adding databases to a website. And uh, that's what I'm doing uh, today. And I'll start with the website update endpoint. Um, I've just uh, run our test suite earlier and everything seems to be okay. So it's time to break things by actually doing test-driven development and uh, writing a, an API test for this, uh, which will, of course, uh, break. So let's see. Let's go into our specs. Spec controllers API v1. And there is the websites controller spec. And um, as you can see, we already have a create endpoint. Well, let's update the solar graph gem. I don't know why uh, I have to do that, uh, that many solar graph updates. Might simply be because of different Ruby versions for different projects. Um, okay, so this API endpoint, I think I can simply copy this. And insert it here. So this will be a patch method. Yeah, it looks like I can keep all these tests in place because they apply to updates as well. But we'll have to change a few things. Um, for example, we'll have to have a website from the get-go. So I guess this will first create some duplicated code that we can refactor later. Um, website create. Oh, I guess this will require a few more. Relying on the factory, I think we can simply keep it like this. And then we'll have to run patch update. And we'll have to pass a website ID. And now let's take a look at the um, website's model. What we need for a valid... Well, the, it's already valid, so... simply try and change a few fields. So let's uh, start with simply changing the main domain. And this time we don't just take a look at the 
HTTP response, we actually expect website reload main domain to equal this for the time being because I'll have to look up how this uh, what um, parameters we could make invalid so what's about Okay. Same goes. on the same cluster and then we call update with Successful um, response status. What can we use here? We find out by the error message if this works or not. Oh, that reminds me, I've forgotten one thing. Uh, let's do this right away. I'll have to create a branch. And branch prefix will be 497. Okay, so how am I 
machine is lagging again. I have a suspicion that it's, an, it's a utility. It's, uh, So, we're not authorized. not to have HTTP status success. Let's go ahead and run this. don't have a route, so let's add this one. There's some building noise outside. Yeah, I'll have to close the window. Just a, just a second. Okay, now... I still don't have an update route, why don't we?
I'll have to look up these request specs as well, because they seem to fit the API use case pretty well, but I'm not uh, yet familiar with them. Okay, but uh, let's stick with what we have at the moment. Uh, RSpec controller update. What is this supposed to look like? So it looks like we're basically okay. Why don't we have a route for this? Let's ask Rails. Here we go. So we do have a patch. But we'll have to pass in an ID. I don't know how to use uh, JSON. So if I paste this here, don't have an ID at all, so a change needs to be reverted. We have an ID, we get the action update could not be found, which is correct. Okay, yeah. So that's that. Which means now we need to implement the update method in the 
API controller. Notice that Secure Params is built for the create call because it um, does require the four main attributes, and uh, that of course shouldn't be required for an update call. So, um, what I'm going to do is um, this part oh. uh, this part where I add these requirements. And I think I can... make this a single line without it getting too... Find the website. We can authorize the user for this website. If everything is okay, we can simply call website update. Secure params, and we don't need the attributes variable up here. Okay, looks easy enough. We've broken the create endpoint. Yes, of course, because we are still using secure params in create. And this needs to be create params. And do we actually use attributes in more than one place? No, we don't. So we call this create params.
Oh no, it's completely broken. Let me guess. Uh... Hmm. No guess at all. Oh, it's broken. Attributes. Okay. This one here. In this case, you can see, simply use params. Nice. Let's go with this. Add API and paint website. Update. <coughs> I don't need a lot of uh, explanation here. I'll also only say this resolves Issue number 497. Okay, but we're not yet finished. I'll have to update the API documentation as well, which resides under doc. No, it's uh, docs, API, websites. And we need a update JSON, but I think I can simply duplicate the create one and then modify it. There's no duplicate in VS Code. Huh. Well then. Hmm. Do it the traditional way. Let's look up what uh, API Doco allows us in terms of HTTP. By the way, I've also switched uh, VS Code to VI mode with the VI extension. Um, I've been working with 60% uh, keyboard for a while now, and uh, I find it much easier to keep my, if, if I can keep my fingers on the home row and um, 
don't have to grab for the cursor keys or even the mouse all the time. And uh, that's why I've decided to um, use the VI extension after all. And I've also uh, mapped my caps lock key to control. Previously I had it mapped to what uh, commonly is uh, called the hyper key, which is um, that if you press caps lock, it's equivalent to pressing uh, command, option, control and shift uh, all together. Uh, that way you get uh, a new modifier basically that's never used in, in uh, common applications and so you can do your own key mappings like uh, hyper B for launching a new browser window um, and it uh, doesn't require you to actually press Option Alt Control Shift B. You simply press Caps Lock and B. That's quite convenient, but um, since I'm also working on an iPad, which doesn't have the uh, possibility of configuring a hyper key or even using a hyper key, I've decided to uh, map Caps Lock to a more common modifier, which is the Control modifier. And so I can now easily press Control with my pinky and uh, that makes working in VI or VS Code in VI mode much easier. Alrighty, so HTTP method isn't patch, it's post. I had my doubts because uh, patch isn't really a HTTP method. Um, that should more or less do it. Um, Let's find out, or let's launch, uh, simply launch the application, uh, which I can by bin uh, Oh, I don't have a open browser window script yet, but I can simply use open and then bin URL. The bin URL uh, script here uh, gets the uh, port mapping from Docker Compose and then um, creates a URL based on it. I can show you bin URL. Yeah, so it found that uh, Docker Compose has mapped the application to port Three, two, seven, six, eight, and it's created the HTTP localhost address from there. Takes a bit to load the Rails application for the first time. Okay, here we go, and um, and then I simply wanted to take a look at the API docs. Oh, why does it look so broken? Okay, missing slash, interesting. But that's... Uh, Wait. That's old documentation. That's uh, not what I intended to see. I'll have to remove that stuff. That's that's completely outdated. Huh. Is that still stored in public? Oh yeah. That was old documentation that I generated uh, with yarn, I think. But 
that's even only here on my machine, huh? Well, what's the actual API? That should be visible in the routes file, isn't it? That should be. Here we go. Yeah, Apitoko engine is mounted at slash docs. I think I'll make a breaking change and mount this to API docs. It. Oh wait, add uh, slash APIs. Hmm. Fair enough. So let's see, uh, we have update website. Request to API websites.json. Yeah, that's correct. You have the usual authentication. And let's create an example as well. How oh, is this supposed to look like? Here we have a request post and then simply ID and stuff. Okay. So ID, let's say one, two, three. No trailing comma in JSON, which is a pity. What do we actually get back if we do this? Actually, I shouldn't have to use curl at all. Don't I have something set up in paw? There we go. Let's post this to websites. Record not found. Oh, it's still going to create. Uh, 
Uh, how do I call this? How does this work? Mm. Actually, call this as one dot JSON. No. Okay, so we'll have to use put here. That's what I meant with my suspicion for 
the strange behavior of my machine here. The mosaic window manager. Seems to run into strange problems. Oh yeah, now it's much more snappy. Good. Uh, we don't have a route that matches put API websites. I guess we'll need the ID then. Yep, here we go. And we'll simply get a 204 back. Which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. So we could run this without the ID field as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which also means that... Uh, Our website number one should now have this main domain. Example.com, is that what we had in? Yep, okay, brilliant. So if you change this to www, we get a 204. It's not www. Nice. So this actually works. Cool. Which means. Uh, oh wait, did I actually update the documentation here? This needs to be put. is a placeholder here. documented and it's also not well maintained not sure if I'm going to stick with this
Oops. Okay, so Thanks for following, Excavalsit. Uh, welcome to the stream. Happy to have you here. And I hope uh, to see you in chat. Okie dokie. Uh, I think we're fine. Let's see if our docks are... Looks good. That's a strange way to display a request as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll stick with AP Docker. But it'll do for the time being. Yeah, I'm not too happy with this, but uh, it's better than no documentation at all. So, it's fine. Let's commit this. Let's go ahead and run the test. Tests are always a good time to take some tea.
By the way, I had a bit of a health scare uh, this week, um, or rather last week. Uh, last week I, I noticed that um, uh, a lot that there are a lot more floaters in my right eye. These things that you can sometimes see if you look at a uh, at a light background, uh, at a bright background, and um, uh, I also noticed that. Um, in the dark, I see some some flashes in at the edge of my peripheral vision, and um, I googled that, and uh, it said, "Well, um, it's uh, probably caused by the gel in the eye um, detaching a bit, which is normal. Um, that comes with age, and um, it's especially normal for so short-sighted people like me." However, um, it could also mean that uh, not only the gel is detaching, but also the retina. And uh, so I uh, got an immediate uh, doctor's appointment and had it looked at, looked after, and um, uh, thankfully and uh, fortunately, it's actually only the gel and my retina is perfectly okay. I was quite worried that uh, I had to undergo surgery and uh, have this repaired before I completely lose my vision. Yeah, happy to uh, that it's. Uh, I'm, I'm very, really happy that it uh, resolved so quickly and uh, positively. Let me try something. I find it peculiar. I find it peculiar that uh, these parameters have to be namespaced on the website, and I'm not sure if that's actually the case. So let's uh, create a new request here. Website create, and we'll simply copy this. This is supposed to put in a post request. Can I simply... Maybe I should simply duplicate this. Yeah. So, delete this. This is a website create. Here, body is main domain. If I call this, I get. Oh, yeah, no, this is supposed to be a post request. So we'll add a cluster ID. Parameter. Let's 
serious production. And now we have to add the webmaster address. Okay. These the parameters actually get automatically get namespaced automatically. Interesting. But actually, I don't need these in in this uh, namespace then. Okay, so that means I uh, can simplify the create So we can push this and create a merge request. So a CI run going on. Let's simply run the integration test suite again. And I guess until next time, I'll go ahead and uh, look for an alternative to generate API documentation.
I think the simple end point took me quite some time, and uh, that's because I did it for the first time, and I had to try a few things to find out how this works, but um, I'm confident that in the future I'll be able to churn out create and update endpoints in much less time. These streams are learning experiences for myself as well. And it's part of what I am enjoying doing here. Gone, gone. That's fine. Okay. I'll also run the full test suite again, but I'm confident that it'll it'll be green. Uh Oh, forgot the app because it needs to run in Docker. Yeah, I uh, had another issue um, that I wanted to tackle here. Uh, however, um, it's getting really warm in here with the window closed. And uh, I think I'll need to get out and get some fresh air. And maybe some early dinner or something. So um, I'm going to wrap this up now, um, but before I do, or uh, as part of wrapping up, uh, let's update our stream notes. So what did we learn? Um, how to build an update API endpoint API docker is getting a bit long in the tooth I should look for an alternative Something else? Let's note this as a next step. I should look for an alternative to AP Doco. What I liked the most today was that uh, I was able to do this in complete TDD style and uh, I hope this is uh, turning into a habit for me to build my tests first and then co simply implement what I need. So all in all, this has been a success. Not much to show for it, but I enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. As always, um, please follow the stream to get notified when I go online next time, which will probably be next Thursday night at 8pm Irish time. I'll 
uh, also send a tweet before I go live, so um, feel free to follow my Twitter account at Chivis. It's down here in uh, the bottom bar. And um, I'll also upload this to YouTube so it gets preserved for longer than Twitch does. And you'll find the recording probably tomorrow at youtube.fullstacksensei.com. Uh, I'll let this uh, test finish um, after the stream. And uh, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll hope to see you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye bye.